Hey guys, it's Penguin here, and welcome back to another gold making video. In this video, we're going to be talking about the Valentine's Day event currently going on in World of Warcraft, aka the Love is in the Air event. Now, if you guys are seasoned gold makers or have just playing the game for a while, this event will probably be very popular to you or you just know about it since it happens every single year for a good amount of time. However, there has been a few changes this year, so if you guys haven't been staying up to date for 2022, be sure to watch this video. But without further ado, we're going to be talking about exactly why this event is important for gold makers and what you can do to make the most out of this, depending on what type of gold maker you are. We're going to be talking about farmers and crafters slash people who just like to flip and do stuff on the auction house. So before we go into that, we're just going to do a little bit of a background for this event. So like I said previously, it is called the Love is in the Air event, aka the Valentine's Day event. And for this year, 2022, it is running from February 7th, which at the time of you seeing this video, it is the 8th. So it started one day ago and it ends on the 21st. So if you are watching this, not the day of release, just be mindful that the event is over on the 21st. So, you know, you can gauge how much time you have left. But the big highlights of this event is that there is a very, very hard uh, BOP mount called the X45 Heartbreaker, which you have a chance of getting by completing the seasonal dungeon. It's just a single boss. It's super easy, kind of like all the other seasonal dungeons. However, you can only receive the mount on a level 50 and above. So if you're somebody who has a ton of ults for Shadowlands, then you are in luck. You can try for this mount and I wish you the best of luck. Lots of people have multiple hundreds of attempts and still haven't gotten it, but maybe it's your lucky day. And if you do have a ton of ults, but they are sub level 50, then you will not have a chance for the mount. However, you can still do it for the XP to start leveling that character since it's just a fast dungeon to complete. And you can do it for the tokens, which we'll talk about in just a second. Now the mount that the gold makers are going to be excited for is the Swift Lovebird. Now this is a BOE mount, which means this can be sold on the auction house and it cost 270 love tokens. Now, just to give you a little bit of a breakdown, the charms is what people can farm, and 10 charms equal one love token. So ultimately, you need 2,700 charms in order to make one mount. However, we are going to get more into that later, so, you know, hold off on that for now. Now, in terms of more collector's items, since most gold makers are collectors or enjoy collecting, there are quite a few toys. Now, all of them are BOP, so this is strictly just for your collection. But if you are a toy collector, there are plenty of them to gather during this event. And there are two pets, however, I would stay away from them. It is Petal Feet, as well as the Toxic Wasteling, and they both go for like sub 500 gold. So if you do see them, whether the Petal Feet, you can purchase that one, and the Toxic one is just a drop anyways. But I highly recommend staying away from purchasing Petal Feet, unless you really want it for some reason. But at the end of the day, you should probably just buy it off the auction house. But... That is kind of what we're talking about in terms of rewards. Now, of course, there are a few cosmetic items and stuff like that, but I'm not gonna really cover that in this video since we're going to focus on gold making. But now we're gonna be talking about how to get the tokens slash charms that I mentioned earlier. So like I said, the Swift Lovebird requires 270 tokens or 2700 charms. Now, in order to get exactly just tokens, there are daily quests which you can complete inside of your major city, and you will get about 33 tokens per day. So if you are somebody who has lots of alts or something like that, and you just like to do daily quests, you can definitely do this every single day for 33 tokens. 
since you need 270 tokens for the mount. If you did the daily, you would need about nine days of daily. It's eight in a, like it's 8.2 days technically, but you can't have 0.2 days. So it would take you about nine days in order to make enough to purchase this mount. Also, if you guys do run the dungeon, you will gain anywhere between 5 and 10 from completing the dungeon, so that will also help you out for that daily amount. Moving on, you have the ability to farm charms. Now charms, like I said earlier, it takes 10 of them in order to craft a token, so you do need quite a lot. Now, one thing you do need to note is if you plan to farm charms, and honestly, I recommend doing this with every single character, is you need to go to your major city, talk to the vendor, and pick up the collector's kit. Now, you do not purchase this from the actual vendor themselves. You talk to them and you ask them for it. So it's a different dialogue selection. But collecting or getting this kit allows you to actually gain charms. So if you don't have this kit, you cannot farm whatsoever. Now, I will say we are gonna be talking about specific farms that people can do. However, I recommend picking up this kit on any character that you do current content with. Let's say you are a skinner and doing Korthia skinning or something like that. Having this charm kit, you will passively gain charms and eventually you'll create some tokens and possibly you will have enough for a mount. So even if you are somebody who is not gonna be trying to do these hyper spawns, if you just have this in your inventory, go around your day doing your business, doing your tour gas, doing your callings, etc. You will slowly gain charms, which you could turn into tokens, etc. So I highly recommend picking up this item. But the big news that we have for the people who know about this event in the past is that the main popular farm, which is the Eye of Ajara, inside of Legion has officially been nerfed. So that is no longer the best farm to do, and actually it is pretty bad now. So if you guys are in Eye of Ajar or you planned to go there, just know that it has been nerfed. Now, when recording this video, the current most popular spot is a spot that student put out this morning, which, you know, makes sense on why it's so popular. And that is a spot in Duratar in the Orc starting zone. So if you are a Horde member, you definitely have a bonus because, you know, you're in Orc, you could just walk down to the Orc starting zone. If you're Alliance, it might take a little bit longer time to get here. But what the farm is, is that there are the pig pens or the boar pens inside of the orc starting zone. You take a level 10 there, mass kill all of the boars, and you will gain charms. Now, I will put on screen the average per hour, as I'm not exactly sure off the top of my head, but so far this is the most popular farm. With that being said, it is the most popular, so it will probably be competitive in order to get a spot. But you know, if you are on a lower pop realm or you have friends on a lower pop realm, you can definitely try to sink over to that realm and hopefully gain a spot. If you guys want to know more information about farms because this farm is going insane right now. So by the time you watch this video and may be nerfed, I highly recommend looking towards more of the farming channels. Of course, student is probably the main one, but anybody out there who does post, you know, farming videos, highly recommend keeping their channel on a lookout because they will probably post more farms as the event goes on. Like I said, the mainstream spot has been nerfed, so a lot of people are going to be looking around for the best farm at the moment. But I will make sure, you know, to have a video running of this spot, etc. So hopefully you guys can give this a chance if you'd like. Now, that is basically it for farming charms. You basically just want to find some sort of hyper spawn that gives and rewards charms, and then just do that for an hour, and you should be able to get a pet. Now, at the current moment, I believe that the Duratar uh, farm is doing about a pet per hour, which is about 2,700 charms per hour, which equals to one swift lovebird. Now, looking at the region averages of the Swift Lovebird, it's going to look a little bit different depending on the region you're in. Now, currently for the NA region, the average is pretty high, around the 300,000 mark. 
And last year, it dipped to about the less than 100k mark during this event. So if you are somebody who does not like to farm, just like me, and you have a little bit of gold on your hands, definitely take a look at the price on your server and watch it fall throughout this event. Towards the end of this event, the mount will likely be at the cheapest it will for the year. So you can go ahead, purchase some up, and you know, hold them for a few months and resell them for double or triple their price. I will show the region chart of this Swift Lovebird, but you can see every February there is an increase in quantity, decrease in price, and then it kind of slowly goes back up until next February. So this is definitely a long-term deal, but I have made a ton of gold off of holiday mounts, and I highly recommend, if you have the gold, to test it out. Yet again, it is a long-term investment, so if you do not have the gold to quote-unquote lose at the moment or put it into an item, I highly recommend do not do this because it will not be a quick turnaround. If you want to see more information, you can look on the Undermine Journal, go to your actual realm, select the Swift Lovebird, and kind of look at the daily summary chart. Try to go back for a year and you can kind of see how your server is with this mount. Some will be better and some will be worse. But guys, that is basically it for this video. It is a shorter one. However, this is simply just a small kind of holiday event. There is not a ton of gold making, you know, parts around this. It is really just the Swift Lovebird. But I do highly recommend getting into the market, whether you're farming or repurchasing, because it is a great way to make some gold. Like I said before, keep an eye on the farming channels, also Wowhead or anything, wherever you get your farming updates, because there's a high possibility that spots are going to be getting nerfed or better and better spots are going to be found. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, I highly recommend joining the Discord. That is where you're going to be updated with all of the news that we get for 9.2 about my channel, about WoW in general, anything like that. But Thank you guys so much for watching, and of course, have a good day.